20 of the most ridiculous moments in NFL history. Big shout out to Rebound Football for the video about to react to. This is about to be a banger. I'm already knowing. I can tell, baby. These are the most ridiculous moments. Oh my gosh. In NFL. What history. the freak, bro? Oh, fight. oh my gosh. Oh, all sniff for a while the kid. And then he pulls out. And hey, first, yo. An NFL hold on. You're celebrating a <laughs> touchdown by pegging a dude in the face. Wait, what? Oh my gosh! As a Giants fan, I, I feel very doing. bad for that guy. I'm sorry. That number we did that 19 to you. either. Because Why did you do that? Williams caught a ridiculous interception okay. with his cheeks. Oh, he caught it with his butt cheeks. That's crazy, bro. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy, bro. Oh my gosh, what the freak, bro? That's insane. No, that football stinks. But look, some fans are nasty too. Cause of number 18, this fan got his hand on Tom Brady's used water bottle and did this. Oh my. Insane. Good lord. Wait, that wait, why is does it taste nasty? nasty? Why does it Just like number nasty? 17. Because during a Steelers game, <laughs> Ben Roethlisberger got his back blown out. Hey, his yo. What do you mean by that, bro? Pause, man. No ditty. Hey, yo. <laughs> yo, that's like when you're playing but Call of Duty. Yo, that's like when you're playing Call of Duty and you kill somebody, bro. You get on top of their body and you be like, chuka, 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 chuka. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny, bro. I ain't gonna lie, that was cute. Here got screwed even harder in number 16. Hey, yo. Was back in 2005, a football almost got swept up by a hurricane. No way. And the kick is up, it's on the way. Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> what? Man. Oh, they should let him redo that kick, because that wind is not fair. They should let him redo that kick, bro. But number 15. Did he get to redo it? Too. Go in the comments. If, if the wind knocks out a kick like that, do you get to redo it or no? It's like, whose fault is that? Is that the kicker's fault for not understanding the weather, or is that the like the weather's fault for not understanding the kicker? What did I just say? <laughs> I don't know. Because Justin Jefferson made one of the most My ridiculous twin. catches in NFL history. My twin, I remember this. Yo, fun fact, bro. The day after this play happened, I dropped my Justin Jefferson prank and it blew up and hit trending page. It got like 2 million views, bro. Because I dropped it the day after this play. I literally recorded the prank the day he made this play. So it just like it was perfect, bro. So was OBJ. Because at number 14, he made a ridiculous play for a touchdown. No way. And instead of celebrating like a normal person, OBJ marked his territory with the most ridiculous celebration what did he do? in what did he NFL do? history. Let me see. The Giants have their second what is he doing? Uh, oh, wow. He's peeing he like a dog. dog ah. oh, NFL player number 13 is an untrained oh. dog. Because after making a tackle, Mike okay. Daniels completely embarrassed himself on national TV. What did he do? Mike Daniels is excited. But maybe he's a little too oh. excited. <laughs> he peed on himself. Mike Daniels, do you oh, have to go Wait, party? how does Yo, he not how know? Did that how well, does he not I know? I got even more questions for number 12. Because <laughs> in the middle of an NFL game, okay. the field became flooded in the most ridiculous way possible. What happened? To Michael Robinson, Seattle on top of the Whoa, Whoa there's sprinklers on NFL flat, fields? Flat. Hey, this is that warm That's part of the new ownership. Whoa, that is so dangerous. Look, there's sprinklers on NFL fields. What if you trip on that or fall on that, bro? Dude, oh my gosh, that is so dangerous, bro. Whose stadium is this? That's what they do now. Man, oh, those wow. dudes got soaked. But in number 11, this ref got pounded. Because during a fumble, hey, yo. he got caught in a vicious no. dog pile. Ah! <laughs> That hurts. Oh man, that hurts. That is so sad. Oh, I hope he's okay. <laughs> That's crazy. Man got bro. sent to another dimension. For but real. But anyways, we're in the top ten now, which okay. means we're taking a ridiculous to the next level. Okay. And we gotta talk about the time an NFL game was interrupted by aliens. What? See, in 1979, the Cowboys and Steelers were playing a game in Pittsburgh, okay. and it just seemed like any average game. But yeah. there was something mysterious going on above the stadium. Wow. Because when everyone looked up. They saw this. There it is. What the hell is that? A UFO? What is that? Be sure to your leader. What the hell? I want you to explain that to me, Dr. Well, I, Fox. I, I'm afraid to. This are UFOs real, guys? Right? Go in the comments. Let me know. Are UFOs real? Now remember, there were no drones or anything like that back then, so yeah. people were going crazy, wondering what those flying objects actually were. Yeah, but after that? multiple investigations, there was still no explanation. Hell, oh uh, there was even a news report in 2011 oh. by Channel 4 Action News that still wasn't able to find any solid answer. Wow. So to this day, people still believe it was actually aliens. Man. Uh, or what if they're just birds? What if they're just birds, bro? Am I tripping? I've never seen anything like that. Now for number nine, what know. if I told you this is the only coach in the NFL that needs a bodyguard? Hey, yo. Well, let me explain. See, Rams head coach Sean McVay was having problems with bumping into refs. Okay. I mean, he'd be so into the game, he wouldn't realize that he was halfway down the field. No and way. And it started to become a problem. No way. Every time he got caught or bumped into a ref, 
his team got a penalty. What? Well, the Rams organization decided that they just couldn't have this anymore and decided to take matters into their own hands. Okay. So they put their heads together and came up with the most ridiculous solution. No way. Hiring a dude whose only job is to move Sean out of the way. There is an art to it. Bro, it is kind of like a what? dance. Maybe tango? Like a sidestep into the path. What the, the hell? Are you serious? Back. No, here he is. Here he's just kind of What? Wrong. Bro, he's actually a... Wait, like, whatever this job title is, this guy's actually very good at it, bro. He's actually moving him out the way perfectly. What is this job title? Uh, waist holder mover, bro? I ain't gonna lie. Put me in, but that's the easiest money. Just move him in, left and right, by his hips. I can do that all day and all night. Pause. Not like that. <laughs> A little bit. Now look, well, we gotta talk about OBJ again. Cause okay. number eight, he got his ass beat in front of the entire world. No way. See, Odell's been known for throwing tantrums his entire career. From getting okay. into fights, headbutting things on the sideline, <laughs> no, even just kicking a ball into the stands over a drop pass. No way. But in 2016, someone finally put Odell in his place. What they do? Cause to after him? not receiving a wide open pass, he blew a fuse and decided to attack the kicker's net. But uh, okay. it fought back. They fought back. Oh, I could have Ah! Oh my Yo, gosh! Oh, I know he was that. mad, bro. Hey, man. I know that's that made karma. him so mad, but bro. Three weeks later, after making a game-winning <laughs> touchdown against the Ravens, he may go with the net uh, by giving it a little smooch. Uh, back to the net, which is the uh, I that's gotta be funny. honest, man. That's a pretty toxic relationship. <laughs> Number six is straight up abuse. That's crazy. Because one time, a bunch of Wait, mascots beat up little kids. What? See, during a Vikings halftime show, the team decided to put on a little fun event. Pee Wee football kids. Okay. First grown mascots no way and during the game people thought the mascots were going to take it easy yeah but as you well, should it they're, was supposed they're kids. to be an event to make the kids feel good turned into a bloodbath what oh my god bro oh my god so this is actually so bad yo this is actually so bad bro oh my god <laughs> this is actually so bad <laughs> this is so bad this is so bad but good this is and guess so what? bad, but They've good. been doing this for years. What? Just beating kids up. Oh my over and god. Over. These dudes are a bunch of animals. But Dude, some... what the hell, bro? What did I just watch? There's no way that's real. Why have I not heard about this until today, bro? That is hilarious. Bro, they should put that in Madden, bro. Oh my gosh. Yo, I know damn well those kids had to have signed a waiver or something, bro. Because there's no way that they're just hurting these kids. And nobody has tried to get money out of that. <laughs> the mask to suit them or anything. Because they are literally like throwing these kids like ragdolls. That's crazy. Much crazier moments in the NFL. Like the time a player pooped himself on the field. Or what? when a Chiefs fan got on the FBI's most wanted list. No way. But something else that's crazy is this thing called Factor 75. Okay, hey. buddy, you're trying to get a brand deal. Sorry, I did not get paid for this. I do love Factor though. I have worked with them in the, in the past, so if you want to work come more, you know, so hit me up, but this is not one of those. About the Chiefs fan who got on the FBI's most wanted list. What happened? This is Chiefs Aholic, okay. Kansas City's biggest fan. And for years, he's shown his support for his team okay. by going crazy at tailgate gates and rallying other fans this guy up wears games. a freaking whole suit bro how is he not hot championship game this entire season has been devoted he sounds like patrick mahomes too bro oh my god my camera's about to die one second guys hold on guys all right i'm back guys yo this guy literally sounds like patrick mahomes bro listen to him <laughs> Chiefs Aholic would travel from state to state for every road game. Every and by game? 2022, he'd become a local legend. But then, wow. people noticed something strange. On December 18th, the Chiefs okay. were in Houston to face the Texans. Okay. And as fans started filing into the stadium, there was one important piece missing for Kansas City. Yeah. Chiefs Aholic was nowhere to be found. Uh -oh. Immediately, fans rushed to Twitter, hoping to find some answers. And that's when they found out something horrifying. No way. Chief Saholic, also known as Xavier Michael Babadar, is a career criminal no who was way. disguising himself as a f***ing wolf who loved the Kansas City Chiefs, was actually caught red-handed with a gun robbing a bank in Texas what? on Friday. Yeah. This dude was arrested for oh allegedly my God. robbing. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, that's kind of funny. I mean, it's not funny to rob somebody and put somebody through that trauma, but the fact that this guy was literally robbing banks, my boy, in a whole damn wolf costume, and he got away with it for that long. I mean, you gotta give props, bro. The guy, the guy did it, man. He did it. Oh man, that's crazy, bro.
he is now in jail, bro, so do not commit crimes, kids. Bing Banks in his costume. Wow. And he wasn't doing it to pay the bills. No, nah, it was so he could afford to go to all these cheese What? Games. And now in 2023, he was put on probation and was released from jail. But once the man got out, he cut off his ankle monitor and robbed six more banks. No way. So the FBI got involved and finally caught him four months later. He Kansas stole a million dollars? Chief Saholic off the most wanted list. Chief super fan, fugitive, and suspected bank robber Xavier Babadar had his first appearance in a federal courtroom this afternoon in Northern California. Oh, that's Since crazy, bro. Friday, the man known bro, there's no the way this is real. That's insane. Now charged with bank robbery and money laundering. Wow. Babadar spent the last four months on the lam after removing his ankle monitor and skipping oh, a March goodness, court date. Bro. To that's crazy, bro. In Oklahoma. Huh. This man went from tailgating to facing at least 10 years in prison. Wow. Well, Mike Tomlin should be locked up too. Cause Why? Because number five, he did something so ridiculous. It could have ended a player's career. See, what during a close game against the Steelers in 2013, okay. Ravens' Jacoby Jones caught the ball and made an incredible run. I mean, Jacoby there was Jones nobody was so in good front at kickoff returns, bro. It looked like a guaranteed bro. touchdown, He's or so, so he that. thought. Because just before he could reach the end zone, NFL coach Mike Tomlin pulled a dirty play from the sidelines by standing out on the field to block it. No way! No way! On the field here. Oh my gosh! Wait, was that on purpose or accident, though? there yeah now that's a cheap shot was that on purpose i don't know was that, that could have been on accident MCL though with a stunt like that and that's it no more nfl career and while the steelers ended up losing wow. the game the nfl didn't let tomlin off the hook because after reviewing the play they decided they needed to pay the price and find his ass a hundred grand oh my after the gosh incident, though, mike didn't say shit. i mean it took him nine years before he even acknowledged it for real? on the pivot podcast he said this when you try to trip that man on the sideline, <laughs> like, bro, hey, hey, like, hey, it's, it's, I ain't hey, know if everybody hey, flat out asses, bro. Your hey, ass was, your ass was hey, right did there. Did he do it? Was, hey, did he try? Hey, I'll tell you this. People that know me and know the level of respect that I have for, for the game and the men that play it, then I don't feel the need to explain it to them. And those that don't know me, I just assume they think the worst of me. I don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. But look, but did you or not? Is way <laughs> like you didn't answer the question, bro. Was it on purpose? The nastiest event in football ah, history. Ah, Dexter. See, Dexter. During the 2020 season, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens were taking on the Browns. Okay. But during the game, something was off for Lamar because there was clearly something bothering him. So at the start of the fourth quarter, he what? ran off the field claiming he had cramps. But uh, that's just what he wanted everyone to think. Because 10 minutes later, Lamar came back out ready to play. Like Wait, don't happened. tell me, did he have so the poop? Twitter, celebrities, and the entire internet started thinking Lamar was lying. And that he actually took the Browns to the Super Bowl. Uh, his Steve, I'm now being that's told funny, Lamar bro. Jackson is back in the Ravens locker room being treated for cramps. Boy, when Lamar was asked about the incident, he tried to cover his ass. Just to clarify, he didn't use the bathroom or anything in the back, right? I was cramping. I ain't putting a Paul Pierce. This man beat the allegations, the Browns, and the toilet. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Was he really cramping? I mean, yo, look how he did that little wave. Look, when, when the guy's coming out the door, the way he told him, like, come on, hurry up. I think you got to poop, my boy. I ain't going to lie. This man beat the look, allegations. Look, look. Watch when the guy the comes Browns out. Browns, and the he's toilet. Like, he's like, he's like hurry up, hurry up. Look, look. He's like, hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. He definitely had to poop, bro. Let's be honest, bro. <laughs> three, which means we're going redonkulous. Starting with the time a fan stole millions from the New York Giants. No back way. In 2008, the My Giants favorite and the Patriots team? were facing off in the Super Bowl. And going into the match, okay. the Patriots hadn't lost a game the entire season. Okay. But when the final whistle blew, the Giants had beaten the Patriots, leaving fans crushed. Yeah. But one fan took the loss too far, because he found out the jeweler making the Giants Super Bowl rings happened to be near his hometown. So he devised a plan to break in what? and steal them. And after weeks of planning and pulling together a team of two other guys, he not only broke in and stole the rings, he stole everything else inside, no way. pulling over $2 million. And uh, he would have got away with it, but he told one of his ex-girlfriends the entire story. And after they broke up, she ratted his ass out. <laughs> so in the end, Sean was sentenced oh, to man. 20 years in prison. Number one rule, bro. First thing, don't ever do crimes. But, you know, if you happen to find yourself in a position, bro, don't tell anybody what you're doing. Do things by yourself, especially not a girl, bro, especially if she's not your wife, because you most likely are going to break up and she's most likely going to snitch on you, my man, and you will be in prison. <laughs> Jeez Louise. And the Super Bowl rings were all returned. Damn. I don't know she's if messed up for crazy that, though, bro. Or savage. Why would she but snitch? Plaxico Burris was just dumb. Cousin number two, he ruined his career in the most ridiculous way. 
Wapping. See, Plaxico Burris had everything you want. A spot on the New York Giants. Yep. Millions of dollars. Hey, he was a beast, and bro. I even miss a him. Super Bowl ring. This yep. man was on top of the football world. Yep. But he had one more thing that cost him everything. See, in November of 2008, yep. Plaxico was in a New York nightclub, just looking to have a good time. But he kept that thing on him. And while he was walking up the stairs, the unthinkable happened. His gun fell out of his pants and accidentally shot himself in the leg. What? Even though he got rushed to the hospital, Hospital and ended up being okay. Things got way worse, cause not only did he get a four game suspension from the NFL, but it shot his hopes down of an NFL future. Now, wow. a big city anti-gun mayor is involved. Wow. One who only last year posted bro, thousands how does of your signs gun warning people out? against using illegal guns. How the f bro, bro, guns don't just go off. Like, guns don't just pull, bro. Like, how the hell? It must have fell and then you tried to grab it and then accidentally pulled the trigger or something. Or maybe it fell, cause some, some guns back, especially back in the day, would hit the floor. It was like they would drop and shot and fire. So maybe, I don't know what happened, bro, but why do you have a gun in New York? You can't even have guns in New York. Like, what are you doing? Oh my God. Guns. I think it'd be an outrage if we didn't prosecute to the fullest extent of the law. Under New York state law, if convicted, Burris would face a mandatory three and a half years oh in prison. Oh my God! After Plaxico was found guilty, that four game suspension turned into a criminal record. Wow. Two missed seasons and millions of dollars lost. Damn. And as if that wasn't bad enough, Plaxico regrets that one shot every single day. Wow. I see guys like Randy Moss and Terrell Owens and wow. all those guys that I played with. And I was like, I basically like shot down a Hall of Fame career. Man, next time just leave the safety on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to laugh because I feel bad. I'm sorry. It's just why do you have to say shot down a career? Like if you know, because never mind. Prayers up for Plexico. Well, listen, we're moving on to number one, our Jeez. top moment, the most ridiculous halftime show in okay. NFL history. It was Super Bowl 38. Okay. Over 144 million people watching live. Woo! Everyone from children to adults to grandparents yep. were all huddled around their TV. Yes, and sir. they were excited to see two of the biggest stars in the world, Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake. Yep. So when they took the stage at halftime, everyone went crazy. Yes, sir. Janet Jackson's a legend. The two put on the performance of a lifetime. Yep. But during the final minutes of their epic performance, something nobody saw coming happened. What happened? Because on the final note of the performance, oh, Justin was supposed I remember to this. rip part of Janet's costume oh, to yeah, reveal she, another she layer of her the world outfit. On but instead, yeah. she had a wardrobe malfunction, oh, my gosh, exposing bro. herself to the entire world. Oh, my and just gosh. a few days later, Janet opened up about the situation, wow. explaining exactly what happened. Was it planned? Wow. No, it was not what, planned. What, well, what people don't understand is wow. he was to take and rip the piece off that he did. The but, leather piece. Right, but more came off than what was supposed yeah. to. And this proved to be a costly mistake for everyone involved. Yeah, so Cause sad, not only bro. did it hurt Janet's career, but the NFL was asked to refund the halftime show sponsor for wow. 10 million. Oh God my damn. gosh. Now that is one expensive nipple. But believe it or not, there's an NFL player that lost more money than that for breaking the rules. Cause Calvin Ridley lost over eleven million dollars oh, after being my suspended gosh, that's the most for I've gambling heard in NFL games. What? Turns out he had no clue that rule existed, and he's not alone. There are a ton of NFL rules that nobody knows about, like how wow. players aren't allowed to use inhalers, or that a team what? started fining players every time they farted. There's what? some wild stuff going on in that rule book. So if you want to hear more, they need to click on this video oh, right man. here. These I, I reacted to this already, but I don't remember some of those things. That's crazy, bro. Hey, big shout out to freaking Rebound Football. He's a legend. He's a GOAT, man. You already know how we coming. Listen, bro, make sure you guys put God first, bro. You know what I'm saying? I love you guys so much. Thank you much for the love and support. Um, I've already recorded. That's my fourth video I've recorded today. Uh, I plan on recording probably like 10 more. I'm trying to go up, trying to grind for you, boys. So it's, we can't do a health check on the channel right now because I haven't uploaded in two weeks, technically. To like in this lifetime that I'm living, I haven't uploaded in two weeks. But realistically, there's been a video that's dropped every day for the past like three days so when i get back from texas i'll re-up on more videos and then we'll hopefully we're at like close to 40k by then but yeah man love you guys so much thanks for the love and support man it's what you love matt put guy first gang gang